to get started on this project, I do a couple of things. With this paper, this is the Canson Me 10s. It is extremely opaque. Like I can't trace if you like to draw your, your work out on another piece of paper. Now that doesn't mean somebody who doesn't want to freehand. You can freehand it and still have the same problem. I don't like to freehand on my actual like finished projects paper because if you have to erase, which you're going to, you can mess up that paper and you end up with smudge marks all over. I just don't like it. So I like to, if I'm going to freehand it, freehand it onto another piece of paper and then trace or use a projector to project that onto the canvas. Or if you just want to trace, that's okay too. That whatever gets you good finished art is all I care about. I don't care what methods you use. I'm just going to give you a few easy tips to make that happen for you. This paper, the Canson Mutons, this is a light gray. It is really opaque. I cannot use that to trace from. So I have to use a projector to get my image on. You could also use tracing and transfer paper. It doesn't always erase that well. It doesn't smudge out as well. So just something to be aware of. It is an option for you though. But that's how I get my image on there with this paper, either tracing and transfer paper, or in my case, ideally, a projector. If it's a thinner paper, a solid white paper, you can just tape this to your computer monitor and trace over it. Some of you tech people are cringing, but I'm telling you, I've done it for years, never caused a problem. So there you go. So a black masking tape, this is acid-free or pH neutral. You don't want to use regular masking tape. Regular masking tape is going to leave, it all, all of the tape is going to leave residue behind. But if it's not an acid-free residue it's leaving behind, over the years that can start to yellow and cause issues as far as the work being archival. So when you're working on something like this ideally, use that acid-free tape. The links for everything that I'm using in today's video are listed in the video description. The reference photo that I'm using, you can get over at my website, lawcree.com. The link for that, the direct link for that is also in the video description. So you can pick that up there and draw along with me. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on this. One of the things, the big things I wanted to talk to you a little bit different from last week about was the charcoal powder. So I went ahead and picked some up. You can kind of see it's kind of blurry because it's too close to the camera, but this is just a little thing of charcoal powder. And you can get this on Amazon. I have the link in the video description if you do want to. Now, here's the thing with charcoal powder. It is messy. It is, it's actual powder. Well, it's really dark. You can't tell. But that is powder, like super, super, it's messy. Like, you can make an absolute mess with this. Now, a lot of people will use a brush, something like this to apply char charcoal powder, graphite powder. I've used it. I've tried it. It is messy with unsatisfactory results. We'll, we'll go with that. So what I recommend doing instead of a brush like that, if you do that, use those brushes, you're going to have fall off of that, that charcoal is going to go everywhere. So instead, soft tools. That is these guys here. You can pick these up on Amazon there or the some art supply stores have them. The link is in the video description, but I'm just going to use this to apply the charcoal powder. And the cool thing with this is that it's going to give me a really, really soft result and it erases so well for highlights. So you can get some pretty cool effects. Charcoal erases pretty well anyway, but there we go. So what I'm going to do is just dip this a little bit. Look how quickly that just blackens right up. Tap some of that off because it's going to be everywhere. And then I will also tap it on. I'm using the lid, just kind of tapping some in there. Like it really does make a mess. And now we can just go over wherever we want it to be. Now I can pretty safely go over the bird too because I can see his lines, but I'm not even going to worry about smudging that out. But I can get a really nice soft look. I'm going to reload that again. Just a little bit. Tap that off and then lightly go over it. And you just, I would rather see you layer this until you get it the darkness you want than try to get it as dark as you want first time through because it's just so easy to make a mess. And I just want kind of a sketchy, soft background in there. Let's add a bit more. See here, I didn't tap as much off and you can see it's, it's much darker. Through and blend that again. You can see I'm really not losing my lines, so you you can blend right over. It. And you don't have you can just skip this step if you don't have the charcoal powder. Technically, you can make your own by grinding up if you've got the charcoal sticks. Going back over that some more. Now what I'm doing here, can you see this harsh line? That's because I switched directions while it was still touching. So I've got a few ways that I can blend that out. One, just take a piece of paper or towel and rub over that. That is soft enough, I can, I can lose that. If you want to avoid it in the first place, don't stop and switch directions while it's still touching. As you're pushing down, lift up and that will give you a really soft end look. 
if that makes sense. Like you don't end up with that harsh line like I have there. But because it's charcoal, it is pretty easy to correct if that does happen. You can soften all of that back out as needed. I softened it too much. I need to add some more. Could you use pan pastels instead of the charcoal powder? Uh, Baby Pandas asks. Yes, you could. It would give you a different result. I'm not sure why you, though. I mean, it would actually be a unique result, but I'm not sure what the benefit, like, pan pastels, unless you were doing black and white, the, the charcoal itself works just fine. And it's way less expensive. But if you wanted to add a touch of color, those are compatible mediums to work with or to mix. So some cool looks you could do with this if you wanted to take an eraser. I'm not going to do that on tonight's, but you could take an eraser and put in or erase little circles so you've got that bouquet look. Really easy way to get that. And this just gives you a somewhat softer result than what you typically are going to get with the pencils themselves. The other thing, notice I'm not, and this is something that I really, really had to break the habit of doing. I used to take my fingers and blend everything with my fingers. That isn't archival. We want to keep our, our fingers off the work as much as possible. I mean, sometimes things are just going to blend better with our fingers. Do that limited. Don't do it. Don't do it often if you can avoid it. We want to keep the oils off our skin so that the work stays archival. People, finger juice is not, it's not acid free. So we're going to go back to this. we just have this nice soft shadow back here and this is just going to be such a great way put the lid back on this by the way because trust me you do not want to spill this the mess this would make like it would take for you will it's worse than glitter almost like you would never have it all the way cleaned up so be very careful not to spill that keep the lid on and I'm always checking my fingers as I work in charcoal because if you don't you may if you do touch something you get fingerprints we don't want that. So, and while sometimes you can erase it, a lot of times you cannot. So it depends on how severe it was or if there were oils on your skin at the time that came off onto the work. Okay, back to work. So now we can go ahead and start on the chickadee himself. Whenever you're working from a photo, this one I got from Unsplash and this is linked over at my website. Link is in the description if you want to download this to follow along. Whenever you're working with a, photo, a color photograph, switch it to black and white so it's easier for, easier for you to judge your values. And usually when I switch something to black and white, I'll do some adjustments in Lightroom or any whatever photo editor you have, but maybe make hype up the contrast, see if it looks better if you make a few adjustments there. But it's much, much easier to judge your values if you change the reference photo to black and white. Now, when it comes to charcoal, the medium and the extra soft, as far as how dark they are, they're similar. Extra soft is going to go a little bit blacker, but not by a lot. The main reason I'm going to use extra soft or soft, those two are really similar, but an, a softer pencil versus medium or hard is that the medium and hard leads, they are going to keep a finer point. They're going to be a hard, well, it's a harder lead. So it's not going to be as brittle or as smudgy. So if I want an area to just stay put and not smudge all over the place, then I'm going to go with a medium pencil. If I want something that I know no, I want to smudge out really well, then I'm going to switch over to my soft or extra soft. Now, the white pencil, somebody said they had a hard time finding white pencils. Generals, charcoal white, this should be listed in the video description. I use this for drawing my outlines on my acrylic paintings. I use it for everything. This is, I, I have a lot of them. I just buy mass amounts because I use them for everything. They last a pretty long time. Next, we need glassine. Let me find where I put that. I'm going to start on the branch because I am right-handed. I would rather work from this direction over so that I'm not resting my hand as much on what I'm working on. So let's just start with the branch. I'm going to put a piece of glassine here. And the reason that the glassine is important, I'm just taping that to my board. The reason that that is important is it's going to keep me from smudging work, keeps the side of my hand clean. You guys know what that's like when you've been drawing in a sketch pad. And no oils for my skin are getting on the artwork. I can rest my hand there. So just looking at where the general lights and darks are. And at first I just want to map it out. I don't worry about detail or anything like that being super exact. And I'm going to use my soft or actually extra soft for the base here. I'm just going to put that mostly in the middle. And I'll smudge that out to the outer edges.
So again, with that extra soft, we've got a little knot in the wood here. I'm gonna pull this over as I work down. And I don't know if you can see, some of the charcoal is falling off. That's normal. Don't worry too. I mean, it's not going to make that big of a mess. Not like the charcoal powder. But I would still, like when I'm done painting all of this, I am going to wipe down my easel with a damp rag just to, to pick up anything left over, any of that charcoal powder left over because it, I have left it where I forgot to do that, forgot to wipe it up. I've done this with pan pastels and colored pencil on sanded paper too. And when I... I use the hairdryer on the acrylic painting, it blew the dust up into the work. So do wipe it down after, but it's not that, that messy. It's not as bad as what I find like pastels to be. So what I will typically do is keep one side for the dirty, actually it looks like that's the dirty side and one side for the lighter side. If your, your shading tool starts getting really dirty, I mean, mine's pretty dirty on both, just take a piece of like an old rag, or in this case, I'm using Viva paper towel, which is very cloth-like, so it works well. And then I'm gonna wipe that off. I don't care if the dirty side is dirty. And now I am going to smudge that out. Now I can also use the soft tools for smudging. It doesn't have to be, actually it smudges really nicely, but this is another method for blending. You don't have to just use the shading tools. The shading tools are going to typically make things a lot lighter because you're pushing a little bit harder. This is a much softer look. So, or you're not, or a softer pressure. And so it stays way darker. It's just a little bit harder to control, but for this, it works. Okay. Now let's get some of those highlights on. Now these, if you are over on Patreon and you watched my recent video, I was talking about this with the warbler. When you've got branches, it's really easy to think that your highlight is gonna go all the way down. If light's coming from this side, your shadow's all the way down this side. That's not really how things work in nature. You're going to have where one branch causes a shadow on another one. And so instead of just thinking, okay, my light is all on one side, so this is all the shadow side, you're gonna have light or shadows that come and go. They kind of skip depending on what around Around it that you may not be seen is casting shadow or highlights on or reflections on. So this is something that you really want to watch in your work. Look at your reference photos where it's so easy to assume, okay, shadow on this side all the way down. You just, you made a cartoon, now it's flat. If you want it to look more three-dimensional, you want it to look like that branch is weaving in and out and aiming towards you and moving away, watch that the shadow will be partial. So partial shadow, a little bit of highlight, partial shadow. It's not just all the way down one side. And it looks like we've got the little knot here. Actually, I missed the knot up here. Now, another thing that you can do is take your eraser for highlights. It doesn't have to be just with the pencil. So you might like the results you get there. And this one's the Tombow Mono Eraser, so that's really nice for fine detail. I mean, not as fine detail as you can get with a pencil, but it's a lot thinner than your usual eraser. If you, another thing you can do, I think I have one over here. Did I put it? Yes. So if you've got an eraser like this, this one's quite a bit larger than the Tombow Mono Eraser. If you have one of these, you can take a razor blade. I don't know if you can see, I've cut it here and here. So when I hold it to the side, I can get a thin line with what's really a thick eraser. Of course, you end up wasting some because you're cutting parts off, but something to be aware of. Okay, so we'll get some of those. We've got a definite highlight. Actually, I want to get more of a shadow over here. So I'm layering some more of the shadows. Okay, and we've got this whole mess over here. Now you can get these soft tools where they're shade, there's more of an angle to them. I have them. I'm just too lazy to get up and get it. But it does make it a little bit easier sometimes. See how, look, I just shaded it like build that in. It's a little bit easier than just using the pencil. Now I'll go on and correct like where I need it to be darker or lighter. And see again, it's not just a shadow all the way along that one branch. Now 
the thing that you want to start paying attention to in your drawings, if you're trying to make them look more realistic, really pay attention to your values. My stick, my branch, not going to be exact. It doesn't need to be. Get those values in there. Dark's dark enough. Light's light enough. Pay attention to where those go. That is going to make your work look way more realistic. So we've got some detailing in here. My branch is shaped a little bit different because that little smudgy dead leaf it looks like or maybe growing leaf that's on the tip look, would look weird because in black and white it doesn't look like a whole lot of anything just wait here can you see wade is dreaming look at him twitching he's dreaming of running oh and even breathing heavy because he's running so hard greyhounds are funny okay and don't feel like everything needs to be blended out. Sometimes it's going to look best just with those pencil lines. And when I work in charcoal, I personally really like a more sketchy look. So like here, I'm not going to blend that. I like that charcoal rough look with, with charcoal. That's not redundant at all. Okay, moving down. So we get these highlights in there. Now this whole area under the bird is much more shaded. So I'm just gonna use this tool and smudge that in. If you don't have this tool, you don't have, have charcoal powder, to pop, what, English powder, don't worry. You can just go ahead and fill that in with your pencil. It may just take a bit longer. And we've got a highlight that comes through here and it's gonna highlight right around his foot. So we're gonna lighten that. And I'm gonna take the eraser to lighten some of this too. So it's not quite as light as the pencil. So we've got a little bit of the stick coming out here. As I drop things. Now I've got a smudge there. I can erase it if it won't erase. Oh, it erased fine. But if it didn't erase, I can just smudge over it. Blend, it would have blended out. So sometimes you're going to have things, no matter what medium you work in, things are going to go wrong. A child is going to come up and stick their hand in it, or you're going to stick your hand in it. You're going to drop, this is my thing. I drop my paintbrush and it'll hit and leave a mark. I do that all the time. I'm so clumsy. So that stuff is going to happen. Don't freak out when it does. Just learn how to fix it. You want to make sure when you, it's better early on to figure out how to fix mistakes. Don't panic. Don't throw it away. Don't start over. Just figure out how to fix those mistakes. That is a very important part of art. This is another area. I'm going to leave it more sketchy. I want to get some variation, some areas a little bit darker. I'm just using my medium pencil now. Okay, let's get this a little bit darker. I want the extra soft just as it moves down here. God, every time I use charcoal, I forget how much I love soft tools. I don't know why I don't use them on every single thing. They're so nice to blend with. And that I can show you some of the different shapes. These don't have the, the spongy things on them, but you can see these different shapes you can get. So if I wanted a tiny little detail, this angled one is going to be really handy. This is a smaller area, so I'm just going to do it with the pencils instead of the soft tool. I don't want to smudge this everywhere. Look how I'm leaving the background of the paper showing through. This is going to give me more of that variation that I'm looking for. Some texture in there, little squiggles. When I'm working on something like this, this isn't huge. I'm capturing the general shapes, not every single detail. One of the things, especially as new artists, we have a tendency to get hung up on all the tiny details. Don't worry so much about that. Worry about your general lights and darks when you're in, especially like this with this size. If I was working big, I'm gonna go with every detail because it would look weird if you didn't. But in this case, you don't need to. Hit your lights and darks. It's a really good practice to get used to working in sketchbooks. 
you can do things really little where you are dependent only on your general shapes, your general shadows, lights and darks. You can't, there's no room for details. So, I mean, I know there are some people who are miniature artists and that's not really what I'm talking about here, but that is a really good way to practice paying attention to where you should put more detail versus just watching your values. I think this should be softened out a lot more. I'm a little bit too dark on some of this. But just lightly sketch over it. And then we've got this one, so just a little bit. I would rather way too little than too much. Too much and you make a hot mess. You can always layer more. That triangle one would be really handy if I had prepared for this and actually had it ready. And again, if you're asking questions that I'm not answering right now, I will. that's something that'll probably be get answered at the end of the live stream when we come back through and, and start going through those. So I'm not ignoring you on purpose. Well, actually, I'm totally ignoring you on purpose. That's actually what I'm doing. I'm, uh, but I will come back to those questions. I was really only planning on using that charcoal powder today because I haven't used it in a really long time. I've been out forever. And I say out. I don't know where it went. Like, I know I had some. I think I lost it. It's probably, oh, my hands are a hot mess now. It's probably around here somewhere. But anyway, it's been a very long time since I've used it. I'm hooked again. Okay. So we've got some highlights. Now I'm resting my hand on the bottom of my drawing board, not on the artwork itself. Since I don't have the paper there. See how these lines, look how I'm curving them slightly. This is going to help that branch look not so flat. And even here, I'll come through and get some curved. See, I'm curving it in and it'll help that branch have that more rounded look instead of looking so flat. So we've got the two stems. If you haven't already, please like this video. Please share this video. Actually, just a quick kind of plug for myself or any YouTuber that you like, share our content as much as you can on Facebook, wherever, uh, Facebook, MeWe. Um, it's a much better platform. It's like Facebook when Facebook was good. But if you can share our content, that helps. YouTube's not notifying people half the time, more often than not. Anyway, if you can share, like this video, comment on everything. If you can't every video, just say nice, say whatever. YouTube likes it. It makes them think, oh, other people might want to see this. Heck, I don't even care if you watch the video. If you see one of my stuff come up, come up, just comment and say hi. I'd be happy with that. I mean, obviously, watching's better. It really helps when you do watch videos. But sharing them, too, will really help since YouTube can't be troubled to do that anymore, apparently. If you're not already, if you sign up to my email newsletter, I let you know the date. Right now, I've been sending it out on Tuesday, letting everyone know when the live streams are going up. And then I send out the reminder five minutes before the live stream. So if you're not getting notified, that'll help. Okay. I'm liking this branch and leaf. Just that real soft... So the boys, before we move on to the little chickadee, the boys have made an advertisement for you. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. 
I'm a dork. That amused me way too much. Okay. Also, side note, don't donate to the ASPCA. If you want to donate to shelters, like, because that's kind of what that's based off of, of, donate to your actual local humane society or local rescues. They do actual work and actually save animals. ASPCA, they're a lobbying group. Their money just goes towards advertising. That's the, like helping animals. If they're helping it, it's only to be on camera to look like they are, but that's not what they actually do. Local shelters and local rescues are where you want to donate to help to like genuinely make a difference in an animal's life. So but now we are going to move on to the chickadee. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm loving charcoal powder again. So I'm going to get my base with the chickadee that way. Actually, before I do that, I want to block in his eye. So just going to make his little circly eye so I don't lose that and his beak. Let's get his beak in too before I smudge the heck out of that. And I'm just going to use the shading tool to shade the top of the beak right now because I know that will have a highlight. Okay, that gives me the majority of that there. Now, back to the charcoal powder. I keep wanting to call it graphite powder because graphite powder I use fairly regularly. I'm used to saying that, so my brain is shutting down and wanting to call it the wrong thing. Okay, so the cap is on the top. We're just going to get that medium tone in there. This is where those smaller soft tools really come in handy. So I'm just going to go over, fill that in. I'm even going to fill in the shadow on the bird here. Man, I should have done this on the Kestrel last week. This, I forget how fast this goes. Really, all of this, I can just go over. You can see as I go over even the white lines, I can still see the white lines there. See, that's about as dark as I can get it without going back over with a pencil. So it's fairly dark, but not as dark as what I'd really want that end result to be. Whoops, that was a little too dark. Blend that out. Okay, nice base layer there. Now I'm going to come through. Let's start getting some of the shadows in, the deeper areas. And I want to pay attention to the direction of the feathers. I'm using the medium pencil. Now I have to double check. I'm meant to be using medium. Um, using the medium, look how these feathers move out. Got some little dots, got some little lines, just a variation of everything in there. Get a ring right around that eye. And then the feathers start moving this direction. And if you, even if you're not following along, if you want to see, just see the reference photo I'm looking at, that's over on my website. Link is in the description. So we're really paying attention to the direction here. See how these start moving around? You really want to watch that, whether it be fur or feathers. They, you don't want to make everything go the same direction. If you do, you just made a flat cartoon. So we'll soften it, but not all of it. I still want to see those lines. And then I'm going to take my white pencil Got a little bit of a highlight coming across the top here. We've also got a highlight on that eye. And I don't want that to be super, super bright. See how going over the black, it just made it a gray? That's all I need there. I want it to look glossy, not like the shiny mark on a person's eye. 
Okay, I'm gonna sharpen it. Now the sharpener for the white pencil works really well. This is just my metal comb sharpener. I don't have any problems sharpening those. Those rarely break. These guys, when I get in, especially the extra soft ones, they are so, so brittle that I definitely find it to be easier if, if it starts breaking. This is a new sharpener and sometimes it'll still break. So if that's happening, using an X-Acto knife or like a razor blade, um, oh, I'm showing weapons on on YouTube, is that safe? But if you use that, you can kind of shave it down easier, oftentimes without breaking the lead. So that's a good way to go. So again, watch the direction here. And right now my artwork is gonna look slightly skewed just because of the way that the camera is positioned. Now that sharpened, this is the extra soft, that sharpened to kind of Oh, a scary fine point. Don't push too hard here. That will break. And that auction ends. Whoopsie. <laughs> All right, bro. Wow, that's new. It's not, it doesn't, I don't usually have it break after I started like that. The whole thing snapped off. That was more impressive than I expected. Oh yeah, the whole, I mean, it's just breaking now every time I try to sharpen. And this is a brand new blade. So that's not because of the blade. It's just the joys of charcoal. So let me sharpen that really quick by shaving it off. Okay, now it's been shaven down with a um, X-Acto knife. Now, another thing to keep in mind with the pencils like these, get a lot. You saw my containers. I have a lot of my charcoal pencils because sometimes you will have a night where they will not stop breaking. Nothing you do will stop them from breaking. If you burn through the whole one and you wanted to work, you better have a backup. So get a they're very inexpensive get a lot of these when you place your orders um if you order out well if you whether you order online or buy in person that's something that you really want to do okay back to the little sky chicken so let's take our tool here i'm just going to soften that out a bit Highlight right across the beak just to clean that up. Now I can pull some of the white into the black as well. Don't go too crazy there. And I'm gonna switch over to the medium pencil here so the lines are a little bit cleaner. Not quite so smudgy. Now that I do want to soften down before I put the white. I want it dark, but not quite that, that dark. We've got a few darker areas that are going to go in between the white, so I'll just go ahead and sketch some of those in. Okay, back to the general's white. Start working on these little feathers. Now you really want to pay attention to the direction of these. And we want to let that background paper show through. So even if you had started on this with a white paper, if you shaded your background in, you should be working against a gray regardless at this point. But here I want to let the gray of my paper show. I think his cheek look a little bit poofier by overlapping some of that right over. Okay, and then back here again. Now we can come back through and add some darker areas too. Um, so if this doesn't feel light enough in some of these areas, we'll just darken what's next to it and it'll make the light areas seem lighter. So if you're working on something and your lights don't feel light enough, make what's next to it darker. Or if your darks don't seem dark enough, make what's next to that lighter. By hyping up that contrast of one, it'll make the other appear lighter or darker. really soft area in here so I can go a little bit more solid. Fill that in more. Susan said, have you used tinted charcoal? I have some from Derwent. I've not really played with much. I may have used it some at some point with Smart Art Box, but not enough for like a full project where I can give much of an opinion one way or another on it. 
Now, the brown charcoal, the sepia tones, that I have used quite a bit. Not in a long time. I was actually just talking to my husband about that. I need to get some more. I love that look. That It gives you that like old photo look. It is so cool. So I will definitely be getting some more of that soon. I don't know. I probably just ran out. I doubt I lost it. But I used to use that exclusively. I didn't used to use black very often at all. Okay, let's take the medium. Actually, I do want to sharpen this a bit. I'm not even going to bother with a sharpener. Let's just use the razor blade. Okay. This guy is definitely going to be cute. I'm really happy already with what he, how he's coming out. The great thing about charcoal, it's just such a fast medium. So if you need to practice fur, if you need to practice feathers or hair, let's say you're, you're, you just suck at people hair, practice it in charcoal, paying attention to your lights and darks where you're not really focused as much on detail as lights and darks and the shapes of things. You will learn so much faster than in any other medium. And then you can take what you learned with the charcoal, which is inexpensive and fast, and apply it to whatever other medium you like. And I'm not sure on the brand of, of sepia charcoal. Um, I haven't even, I haven't bought any in so long. I thought it was Generals, but I could be wrong. If Generals has it, I will be buying from them. But if it's not, I'm not sure. I think Derwent makes charcoal pencils too. I've not tried them, so I, I don't have an opinion one way or another, but I would like to try them. Now, this is getting a bit solid. I can get a little bit more wispy lines in here. I'll come back through with the black pencil to help with that. Here can be a little bit softer. Now here, as I start building up these feathers, if it ends up being a little bit too, too defined or too light, which it is, I'm just gonna blend over. I'll just soften it out a bit. Just a few strokes with the blending tool will take care of that. And once I get most of this mapped up, I can go ahead and start focusing on correcting any details or values. But right now, this is that, that mapping it out section. So I'm just really lightly. I am not adding much. I'm like barely, barely dragging the shading tool across the paper here. So I want to soften it, but I don't want to lose those lines either. Let's darken a few of these areas up. Separate that branch from the tail there just a bit. Now 
Now, once this is done, I'm going to spray this with Spectra Fix, and I'll show you that product in just a moment, and hopefully I'll remember to use it. I know last week I said I would show you spraying it. I totally forgot. So let's see if we can remember to do that this week. Normally when I work in charcoal, I will spray, spray it with uh, Spectra Fix a few times. And the reason that I didn't hear or that I don't on the stream is once I spray it, I can't work again for another 15 minutes. It's going to be a problem time-wise. But Spectra Fix is this product here. It's linked in the video description. I sound like I'm just trying to sell everything to you guys. I'm just telling you what I got. But um, the Spectra Fix is what I use. And I put it in this fine mist sprayer. If you spray out of the bottle that it comes in, which you can, you get heavy droplets. And sometimes those droplets will sort of create a little dot that doesn't go away. You can always see it. Less likely to happen, very minimal, if you use a fine mist sprayer. But with the, the Spectra Fix, I find that it doesn't get darker. Any other fixative, it darkens it a lot. And then I have to go back over and pull out my whites again. With Spectra Fix, as long as you do a fine mist, you keep it at a distance, I really don't find that to be an issue. So just a cool thing there. So let's get the hint of some of these toes. You're not going to see a ton of detail. And then just a few little highlights to shape out those toes. These little nails. Again, you're not going to see a lot of detail here. This is just your general light and dark. Oops, I grabbed the soft when I meant the medium. That's going to blend really smudgy. Not a big deal. Susan said, I love the background. Yeah, the background with that charcoal, just getting that kind of soft, misty look. Such a cool feel. Okay, now we are just going to adjust. Everything's pretty much in. It's just adjusting little things, little... Um, where do we want it a little bit brighter? So like here, I really want that to stand out more. So I'm gonna turn the pencil to the side. I'm gonna push a little bit harder, really pull that out. I want this to be a lot lighter and softer. So I don't wanna cover, I don't wanna do that everywhere. I wanna still be able to see some of those feathers. I just wanna soften that out a bit. And brighten it up. Here is a lot brighter. Watch those values. Okay, where's the medium? There we go. And for this paper, I'm using the Canson Me 10s. I use the rough side. It does give you a bumpier look, which I love for charcoal, personal preference, but it also gives, it's a little bit grippier. It gives the, the charcoal a bit more to hang on to versus using a smoother paper or the smooth side of this. Technically, you can work on the smooth side. It's going to look fine. I just like the grippy, a little bit grippier on the rough side. It's not a huge, huge difference um, between the two sides. So if you drew something out and realized, oh my gosh, I did it on the wrong side, I would just work on whichever side it's already drawn on. I wouldn't redo it. But that's why I choose one over the other. So as I go through here, I'm just going to get the hint, a few of these feathers. I'm not going to sit there and try to put every little feather that you see on the reference photo. I just need to get a hint of some of them. Round off a bit. So close to being done. So this guy, whoever gets him, well, if you mat it on your own, I would definitely go with a black mat um, over a colored mat. Or if I mat it, it'll be black too. But the black will really like center everything off. Or it'll keep attention in the artwork without drawing attention away from it. It'll make the blacks. Actually, I'll show you that now. When we mat this, 
if you put a black mat over it, look at how it pulls the darks out. Well, I need, I'll zoom the camera out in a moment, but it really pulls the blacks out a lot. If you haven't already, you do me a huge favor and hit the like button. I'll love you forever. I mean, I'm going to ask you to do it again next week, but you know, I'll love you till next week. It helps let YouTube know that other people should watch the video too. Now don't overdo this. This is not something that I should see a ton of detail on. If I'm working bigger, absolutely. This size, no. I just want to make sure I'm getting a really good hint, the hint of feathers here and there, and I've got my highlights and shadows where I want them. Let's get some of these darks a bit darker. Now I have used in the past, I used to, believe it or not, I used to work in pastels, but I've used, it was a real problem with those where some of the fixatives, I sprayed it and it made my lights just disappear, completely gone. And that's why I use Spectrafix and only Spectrafix for, pe for whether pan pastels or with um, charcoal, because I really don't find that to be an issue with this. But man, was that a headache. I'd have it completely done, put it over, put the fixative over it and then have to go add my highlights back in. As long as you do this light, look at how just adding that little bit of area, a bit darker, how much better that looks. And this is what I was talking about earlier where it kind of comes and goes, it skips. So I've got areas that are a little bit lighter and then it gets dark again, light again, dark again. You've got, got to get that variation. It'll look much more natural than just dark all the way on one side. It'll make your branch look really flat if you just shade one side and not the other. Whenever you're doing anything with nature, variation, oh, I almost forgot to finish the tail. Oh my gosh. Variation is such a big, diff big deal. So let's say you're drawing a grassy field, variation in that grass. You don't want to just make one stroke again and again and again. It looks too uniform. It looks like a cartoon. You're going to have bent pieces of grass that go up and then switch direction. Variation. Some are going to be brown and dead. Variation in everything will make things look much more realistic. So this outer edge is really light. So I'm pushing quite a bit harder with that pencil. And then the inside I'll shade to darken that back up. Let's get some little dots on his toes just to stand, make that stand out a bit more. Get on his leg. Just lightly going to go over this, tone that down, not toning down enough. Let's try that with the medium pencil then. There we go. That looks better. I'm going to let mine, I'm going to actually lighten it up here just a bit so that it fades off the paper a bit more and it kind of draws your, your dark area stay where I want your attention to stay. And what a difference just lightening that up. Now you're focused more in the dark spots. Oh, I love how this guy came out. I would definitely hang him on my wall. That's how I decide if a painting or drawing is finished would I hang this on my wall? If not, it's not done yet. Or I need better ideas. So with this mat, this is an 11 by 14 inch. The opening is going to be for an 8 by 10. What I want to do is figure out where that would be positioned. So whether I mat this for the buyer or the buyer mats it themselves, I want to make sure my signature is not going to be off the mat. So then I want to decide where do I want to sign my name? Do I want to sign it here? or off to the side here. In this case, I actually think it would look better with the signature here than here. I could sign across sideways there. Nope, I, I, I wanna do it over here. I think that would look nicer. I just put that there so I know where it'll go. 
I'm going, whoops, I'm going to do it very light though. I don't want to push really hard here. My third piece of 2023. Okay, so now the reason that that is important, look at how it's up here. And when you're matting or framing something or gosh, I can't talk. If you're signing something, there's a good chance you, you're thinking, I'll just sign it across the bottom. No, because when this is matted, that would have been completely covered. I just want that right about, actually, I'd like that. I want that leaf off a little bit. So right about there is where I would personally mat that, maybe a little lower there. So this help, it makes such a difference in the black of the mat focuses the darks. The darks are just pulled out so much here. And then again, that signature is not super in your face, but it, it just has a nice balance. So when I'm deciding where to sign stuff, I will always take my pencil and hold it up to see because it's not a there's not always like one answer it's going to depend on the piece sometimes it will look better if you just have a little bit of extra weight on this corner or a little bit of extra weight and that signature does add weight so that's an important thing to talk about when you sign something i don't like i know some people will always sign like red okay it's in your face, but it adds weight to the piece. The painting itself now, that signature holds weight. And if it's pulling the viewer's attention in a direction or adding, like it just pulls that part of the painting down or drawing down. So that's why I hold the, the pencil up to see where do I want that weight to be located. And then I will always choose a color that is somewhere else in the painting or drawing. I won't do a bright red on something like this. I My signature needs to be there. That's what's going to add value. But also, that's not the point of the painting. So I I'll, I know some people will sign on the back of the work, also pointless. Sign, sign the front, your signature is a part of it. Just be smart about how you sign that. I'm more than an arm's length away from the artwork. I don't want to spray this up here. You do that, you're going to have a, it is going to make things dark. It's going to be terrible. I am back. I mean, that artwork is probably, you can't hear me now. The artwork is probably six inches away from where I'm going to be lightly misting this and just very, make sure it comes out right. Done, no more. Let it dry and then do that again. Don't do some heavy, I mean, it was barely anything. I'm not sure how well that caught on camera, but barely anything. You do not want to oversaturate this, just a light misting let it dry completely, and then you can put another misting if you want. If you got a little crazy, you went too heavy, you made it too dark, go ahead and bring your highlights out. You can spray fix Spectra Fix, and ideally that's what you'll do as you work. So if you're doing multiple layers, halfway through, a quarter of the way through, do a light misting of Spectra Fix. It's gonna help that those first layers adhere even more. Now, it doesn't finish it. Like if I run my hand across this when it's dry, it's going to smudge. There's nothing that's going to, you can put enough on, on charcoal that will make it ever not smudge. But we wanna make it adhere to the paper as much as possible. And the more layers we do as we're working, the better that's going to be. That's not possible while I'm working on something like this, and this doesn't have that many layers, so it's not really a risk. But you can spray it, and like tomorrow, I'm going to come back tomorrow and decide, okay, I want a few touch-ups. I want this a little lighter, a little darker, a little bit more detail here. I'm going to do that tomorrow and then I'll spray it again. So you can keep working over that. It, it's not like putting a varnish on an acrylic painting and then that's it. You're not going to paint over that. You can absolutely go back over this as you, as you want. So really cool product there. Sushi wants a cookie too. Sign up for Patreon.